Well, let's see here. We got a Wilmar spray rig here. And it's got two speed problems. I guess I ought to go drive it and see what's going on. But he said it sounded like there was something coming apart in the final or something on it. Let's go drive it. Get in the cockpit here and we'll go drive her around. View of the cab here. Quite a bit of controls in this thing. something on the right side but let's check reverse it doesn't do it in reverse it's only in forward that's odd huh I go back and go forward then I've got problems. Yeah. And I've got problems at four, not reverse. It's that right front motor or torque hub or something going on, but I don't you would think if a torque hub was bad, it would do it in forward or reverse, it wouldn't make any difference in the direction of travel. Man, it sure labors going forward. Sometimes you can pull the motors out of the torque hub and just just spin them and see if one stops you know you might have a motor that's got a directional problem all right let me check this thing out I'm gonna be looking at the right side of the machine I'm almost thinking the right front one difference there about the motor itself is there something hot in this motor 
This one's lukewarm here. Now they feel about the same temperature. Okay. See if I can get this one hub here to where the the fill plugs kind of horizontal. seal is leaking into the final.
definitely something going on with this motor on this hub that is hydraulic fluid in the the motor is leaking hydraulic fluid into the hub so I would say the shaft seal must have hammered out on this thing what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and zip it out what is holding that in there that motor should just slip out of there there's just two bolts that hold the motor the pilot in right there okay Shouldn't be any oil right there. That should be, that should be dry. This motor is leaking oil into the final. Let's just start it. Let's just fire it up and see if she leaks right here. So what I did here, guys, is I pulled all four drive motors out just to see if I was having one motor stall out, but my problem kept switching. I, I kept going in the cab and going from high speed to slow speed, back to rear, reverse, or back to forward. And anyway, my problem kept switching from, it wasn't on one motor, it just kept switching around from motor to motor. And I knew that I had some kind of cross port flow that wasn't supposed to be there. Because one motor would actually stall out, and it, it was never the same motor twice. And uh, but it only really stalled and really stalled the pump on, and tried to stall the engine on on the, the low speed setting. The high speed setting wouldn't do that. So I thought, well, you know, I better get a service manual for this thing and uh, read the theory of operation before I go any further, and figure out how this thing actually works because right now I don't really know how this two-speed setup works. So what I did is I got on Agco Publications because Wilmar is, was bought out by Agco. And uh, you got to go to Agco Publications and sign in as a guest. And then you got to give them some money and download something called Flux Player. And then you can download the service manual for it. So that's what I did. And then I, then I learned about how it actually works. All right, so I'm going to use this nice plug kit that Darren got me. Okay, let me explain this thing. So I figured out the way this thing works now, okay? There's a valve block right in the center of this thing. And we got to pull this valve block out of here because it's just inaccessible where it's at. And get... What this thing does, okay, in... In high speed, in low, let's put, let's let's take low speed mode, or is where we're having the problem. Low speed, there's a two speed valve block, okay. In low speed mode, they're taking the oil from the hydrostatic closed loop system, and they're basically running it in parallel. That what they're doing is they're changing the path of oil flow through that control valve, the two speed control valve, and they're running it in parallel to where all the oil is divided equally. To the inlet ports on the motors and then and then the discharge oil the output from the motor comes out and goes back to the through the control valve and back to return to the inlet side of the piston pump and on series flow what they're doing 
as they're taking it and they're running it through they're running it through the front two motors and then it comes out of the front two motors on the outlet of that and goes back through the control valve and back to the back two motors so they're running them in series that's how they're getting their speed change on it so what we're going to do is pull this control valve out of here because I, I just there's no way of accessing any of that stuff with it in there and I know it's getting power because it's changing speed so I don't know if the cartridge valve in that might be hanging up or exactly what is going on yeah I'm, I'm having trouble getting them Cummins parts for that truck down there Tom just called me and he just the owner he's pretty meticulous about his trucks and he wanted me to change the crank down for a while I was there. And hell, they can't get one for two months, Cummins says, for that truck engine down there. So there's the cartridge valve right there. Golly, can you get that cartridge valve out of there without... I can't see the cartridge valve causing it to drag on one side. So let's see here. What do we got? You got two hoses here so the discharge from the piston pump comes out this side there should be one on the other side and they're coming into each side of the pump here or the valve block okay and then you've got outlets here okay here's two outlets here going to this motor there's probably two on the other side somewhere yeah, there's two over here. What are these two here going to? These are probably... There's probably some on the top, too. They're going all over the place. But they're going back there to those. How do they got? See, that's the thing. we got to really watch how we're routing all this stuff when we go back together. But we gotta start pulling lines and capping them here. And get this thing off and see what's going on with it. Alright guys, so here is the two-speed shift valve. And the way this thing works, there's some, well, there's some logic valves in there, but basically it's kind of a, what it is, it's kind of a glorified flow divider, is what it is. Uh, so what you've got here, Here's your shift valve. There's some check valves in here too. But I gotta take this thing to the shop. We'll pressure wash it off. I think all this stuff's labeled under the grease. We try to cap everything as we can as we go because this is high pressure closed loop stuff. I mean, 6,000 PSI. Yeah, you, you don't really want a bunch of dirt and shit in there, which is kind of hard to do on a greasy pile like this. And I don't know where they're at. They're not around. and. So I couldn't get anybody to wash it off from before I started. So we drove 20 miles to get here to do it. So we did it. We're going to take it to the shop, pressure wash it off. But back to what I was saying, here's your shift valve coil and cartridge valve right here. Okay, here's the, uh, here's the inlets coming from the piston pump. Here are the outlets. Okay, what they did here is on on the this would be the left side actually am i I'm backwards this is the right side so this is going to the right front motor these two hoses here these two going to the left front motor now what they did is they just instead of making a separate port for each one here they just ran the basically forward you know you're going to have a forward and, and reverse basically hose and what they did is they ran them back here and they teed them. So they teed them right here into these motors. So, so in a slow direction, in parallel, slow speed, you're running, you're running, you know, all four of these at the same time to the inlet ports on the motor. On the high speed you're only running through the you're only running out of the motor ports here you know say if you're going forward and you're in high speed you're only going to come out of these two you know and then you're going to come back to the inlet of the motor and the inlet 
an inlet of the the, the uh, front two motors and then the exhaust on those front two motors of the outlets are going to actually come back through the valve through here and then they're going to actually feed these two so that's that's kind of the way they set up for it for the high speed and the slow speed so let me take her back to the shop and let's get this greasy pig cleaned up we're going to disassemble this carch this valve block and see if we got a valve hanging up or something on us or you know do we do we got a you know are we porting oil are we porting oil across something's hanging up and it's or a piece of shit and something you know a piece of dirt and something and it's <clears throat> one of the logic valves is hanging up partially and porting oil the wrong way and you know you never know the valve block might be cracked I was pulling the logic valves out of it and I think I found my problem see the o-ring there it's hard and brittle and it's come apart I'm betting that's probably going to be my issue that it was leaking across the and basically what it was doing I think was putting oil on two ports at one time in slow speed is what I'm thinking but we're gonna pull the other let's see now this one's mash marked or is that because they're all the same part number in there I don't see any difference there and that looks like somebody center punched that one for some reason or another I already read the book and then say they're different parts part parts book says they're all the same part number that one's look at that one's all coming apart too needs a seal kit is what it needs yeah see the o-rings are all come up yeah Needs a seal kit. I bet that's exactly what's going on with it. Let me pull this valve plate off. There's a plate. The work ports, I don't know if I'm too. Maybe I'll take the caps off and I'll clean all the broken material. I knew that was going to happen. Let me throw some rags. I just washed my bumper off, and here we go. Just took the pressure washer to this thing. Of course, here I am right in the middle of some major bow block with oil everywhere. So, what do you do? Somebody's resealed this one at one time or another, and it's completely different seal wise than the rest of them are. This is the same song and dance. Those are just hard and brittle. They're not going to hold 6,000 PSI. Well, the cartridge valve. I don't know this valve in here. Got to get that one out.
good thing we pulled it anyway as much you know as dirty and greasy as it was pull this cartridge out Get on the phone and see if I can find. I think Holt Cat is the dealer. Peterson lost the ag thing. And it's pretty obvious why, but I'm not going to say anything about it here. break this cartridge valve loose with this. Yeah. Pretty I've seen this kind of thing happen before on valve blocks. The O-rings get hard and brittle from heat and just years of use. It'll we'll start leaking across the ports on them and nothing will work right. Yeah, these are the same kind of... These are... Well, see, this one here is completely gone. It's not even in there anymore. So there's a lot of problems here with the ceilings. With the seals on it so i gotta pull the rest of these ports out of here and we'll get completely our valves out of here and we will probably go ahead and pull the work ports out too we gotta mark them and try to get the angle right on them i might take a bunch of pictures of that so i get my angles right on my work ports and uh basically blow because all these chunks of this hard brittle o-rings that are coming apart are all in that valve block now and you don't want it in the rest of the system, which there's probably already some stuff in the rest of the system. But uh, yeah, there's chunks of this shit down in here everywhere. So we got to clean this thing out completely. I got to get this valve out down here. But uh, anyways, well, that's where we're at on that. Uh, basically, this is a glorified flow divider, is what it is, you know. And in slow speed, you're in parallel, and you're sending oil. Uh, through you know say if you're in say if you were in forward you'd be sending it to i don't know which one's forward and reverse on this actual port but if you're say if you were in forward let's just say this one here and this one here is going to the front motors okay so then the oil is going to be coming out of this one going into the inlet ports on the motors coming back out of the in the outlet ports on the motor and coming back in to this port and then also oil will be feeding off one of these lines because they're teed back there and then they tee off and go to each motor and the same same thing there okay and then it's a closed loop system but on on a series connection basically what you're doing is you're sending oil say you're in the forward direction again the oil that comes through the this port comes into the inlet of the motor comes out of the outlet and it's actually feeding one of these okay whereas on the other hand you weren't your your piston pump was feeding this now well it's still kind of feeding it but you're doing it you're doing it in series not in parallel i don't know if i'm explaining that right but so anyway uh there's a two-speed valve off a i'll try to follow up on this one i'm going to get on the phone right now that's why i'm kind of in a hurry because I want to get on, I think I'm going to call Holt and ask him if they're the dealer for this.